I'm going to then segue into my visual aid for this episode. Last episode, Chris mentioned how his coworkers were less familiar with video games and more familiar with film and television. So I created a handy flowchart as to how to get your friends to play video games using Bandersnatch. This is on my Twitter. All you need to do is start at Bandersnatch, because you can convince your friends to watch Black Mirror. It's Black Mirror, right? Let's say that you liked the decision-making. Well, what game should you play? You should play the Stanley Parable. Uh, You know, that's just the most classic Stanley went to the door on his left. Like, you know, it's going to flow so smoothly with the Bandersnatch crowd. Now, add horror. You got Until Dawn. Now, add zombies. You got Walking Dead. Now add AI, you got Detroit Become Human. So you have your pick, you know, and no one's going to walk away from the Stanley Peril being, it's no Bandersnatch. They're going to play that, and if you like the Walking Dead games, you can go down the series. And if you like the Detroit Become Human games, you can play the other David Cage games, but at your own risk. I like how you describe the David Cage trilogy as the Sadness trilogy. Well, yes, that's its canonical title. I wish the story focused more on the game's development. Well, then you're going to want to play the Beginner's Guide. Have you played that? I have, yes. Okay, I haven't, but I watched the full thing. The Beginner's Guide is a like a commentary. It might as well be a walking simulator through a portfolio of this person's work. Yes. I read the Steam description for it. It slowly turns into a narrative about a person who doesn't understand. It's about a creator who makes small hobby video game projects and a friend of his who really loves playing them and wants to encourage the friend to make more and more games. But the friend kind of burns out on his desire to continue making games and like the conflict that arises between them. Right. The, the frustrations of an exhausted creator and a starving fan. Yeah. And that, and the Davey, Davey Redden is the narrator of that game. Uh, wow, what else has Davey Redden made? He also made the Stanley Parable. So you got that loop completed. Let's say you wanted the story to take place on the game's development. Now take the story out. You got Game Dev Tycoon. Let's say you didn't like being timed while making the decisions. How long was the timer in Bandersnatch? Probably uh, like 10 seconds. Yeah, somewhere in that realm. And it was kind of forgiving, right? It was on the forgiving side. Yeah, you didn't have to read like Mass Effect paragraphs as to whether or not the decision will kill somebody. Right, the decisions were a few words, and at most you were choosing between two decisions. Take notes, Fallout. This is how you write uh, prompts. (laughs) So... I don't like being time making decisions. Hey, we got Deus Ex Human Revolution for you. You know, that's that's a fun game. You know, very accessible. Now add Aliens. You got Mass Effect, as we <laughs> mentioned before. I prefer fantasy. We got Dragon Age Inquisition. Did you play Dragon Age Inquisition? I have. There's no timer in that, right? No, I don't believe so. So you can just sit back and be a dwarf and, and, and tell people to, that you're uh, upset with their clothes. Uh, add Teen Angst. You got Life is Strange. Let's say... That you'd liked the many different endings. We got Papers, Please. It's got like 20 endings. I was going to put Nier Automata on here, but I was actually thinking that people were going to use this as a reference. And I didn't want your first video game after watching Bandersnatch to be Nier Automata. That's a little much of a stretch in my opinion. Yes. Very, also, very niche. if you have complaints of the flowchart, just tweet me and I'll uh, make adjustments as requested. Let's say you prefer that your decisions mattered less. We got <laughs> Fallout 4. You know, because what are the decisions in Fallout 4? Who you pick to blow up the Institute, spoiler, uh, whether or not it's like the shinier guys or the ragtag guys. Should I say yes or should I say yes sarcastically? <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah, exactly. The dialogue choices are limited at best. Even less than Fallout 4, Skyrim. Same thing. Which side do you pick? It's it's purely cosmetic, in my opinion. It's been so long since I've played it. I can't say. Let's say you want your decisions to matter even less than Skyrim. We got Saints Row 4. That's mainly a reference to like the first three choices that you make as the president. Right. Uh, cure world hunger. I get to punch this guy. Don't high five or high five the awkward guy. That is so funny. I and forgot about that opening. N- it, none of it matters. And I don't think... Saints Row 3 had 
some pretty significant choices as far as like the growth of your crime empire and whether or not you negotiated with the military or kind of went rogue and you know there's multiple endings in that game for good reason saints row 4 not so much it's the most linear tree you've ever seen it's a palm tree let's say you don't want your choices to matter at all minecraft story mode if you want the best time watch the super best friends play minecraft story mode the intro of that video series has minecraft versions of pat and wooly like blowing their brains out and jumping into like a dumpster fire because it's the least engaging video game you could just set the controller on the table and it'll run for hours your decisions do not matter it's for babies so play minecraft if you don't want the the decisions to matter at all let's say you liked controlling stefan we got the sims 4 this is a reference to um janice was saying how oh it's, it might as well be the sims I mean, I liked making him go ballistic. You got Grand Theft Auto V. I'm talking F yeah ending. We got Street Fighter. So that's the the reference to... This is still a spoiler portion, Chris. Uh, this is a reference to what you said. You fight the psychiatrist. Yeah. Well, actually, you could jump out the window, like I said. But if you're choosing the F yeah ending, you're going to fight. I liked the government conspiracy and being on drugs. We happy few. Have you played this game? I have not, no. Me neither, and it's not critically acclaimed or anything, but it just checked all the boxes. I need more Surgeon Simulator. In that game, if you prick yourself with a hypodermic needle, you you go into like a whoa, you go high. Oh, okay. So, I liked how my progress carried over after death. We got Minute. You played Minute, right? I haven't, but I know it's it's like conceit. Okay, so... You only have a minute to live, and after that timer, whether or not you've progressed or anything, you restart the the spawn point. What you can do is you can go out and gather resources, or I think you grab a sword, and that allows you to progress even further. And there's people that you can meet, and if you get all the way through their dialogue options, you now know of where the treasure is so it's very similar to in bandersnatch when you like see the rabbit and then you know to go to the safe and get the rabbit out and then you get on the train i should mention that ending the little kid is clearly aware that he's gonna die (laughs) and he does the best job of just like closing his eyes and let and awaiting his fate but uh lastly i like that it was based on a book the witcher 3 that's how to get your friends to play video games using Bandersnatch. <laughs> you've, you've included a path for just about anyone. After all of these years, the spirit of my dead daughter can rest in peace and I can talk to my wife. Here's a 9mm as a gift? <laughs> it's got 5,000 likes.